What's on your radar, t radar today, Ryan? <laughs> so yesterday, a district judge threw out the FTC's high-profile complaint against Facebook. The Federal Trade Commission, joined by dozens of state attorneys general, had charged that Facebook had become a monopoly and was deploying illegal anti-competitive practices to maintain its dominance. The judge's decision should be a wake-up call to the Biden administration, which still hasn't named a lawyer to serve as assistant attorney general for antitrust. The choice, according to people involved, is down to two Jonathans, Jonathan Cantor and Jonathan Salad. Cantor is the favored choice of the anti-monopoly movement, and he spent his career going after centers of concentrated power. Salad is known as a talented attorney, but people who've worked on antitrust cases with him say that he's the first to admit that he's new to all of this big tech monopoly stuff. The district court judge's opinion shows that the government has zero room for error in taking on big tech, as the deck is heavily stacked in favor of corporate power. This was an Obama nominee, after all, who threw the complaint out, and it won't be any easier in front of Bush or Trump nominees. The judge was clear, however, that he wasn't throwing out the whole case, and he gave the FTC 30 days to refile. The problem, he said, was that the FTC hadn't sufficiently proven that Facebook was a monopoly because they didn't explain or define enough terms in this new social networking field. In other words, it was a stupid technicality. But when you're going up against some of the most powerful forces on the planet, it, all of your T's have to be crossed. The case was filed before the new chairwoman, Lena Khan took over, so the new FTC shouldn't have a problem refiling and moving forward. But, but it's a reminder that if the administration wants to actually take on big tech, they can't half-ass it. The ruling should also be a wake-up call to Republicans who say they support antitrust enforcement but don't think we need new laws. Here's Utah Senator Mike Lee just last week. The only people who still argue that there's no reason to be concerned about competition in big tech are the ones paid by big tech to say so. As we've seen, the idea that big tech operates in a functioning free market can no longer be taken as a serious position. Well, fine, the district court judge's silly argument might, might not be serious, but it does have to be taken seriously. Meanwhile, the administration might be overlooking one other good reason to go big on antitrust, and that's inflation. In a recent radar, I explained why Larry Summers is wrong when he warns that inflation should be the primary concern of the White House's economic team. And he's most definitely wrong. But there is a media ecosystem out there that is itching to tell that story. Look what happened when there was a speculative spike in timber prices for a few weeks. It was all the business press wanted to talk about. They're hoping that if they can create a story that we're at risk of massive inflation, Democrats will have to cut back on their program, particularly their upcoming infrastructure spending and the child tax credit, and then they won't have to raise taxes on the rich. That's the game being played. To help win that game, Biden could put Jonathan Cantor on the field. Here's why he matters. The traditional understanding of inflation boils down to supply and demand. If there's too much demand, but there isn't enough supply, so the theory goes, prices go up. So cutting child poverty in half might sound like a nice thing to do, but all those people now have money to spend, so we'll see prices go up and everybody loses. The ugly, unspoken solution at that point is to increase poverty so that prices stay stable. Besides the fact that there is no serious reason to think long-term inflation is coming, there's another way to skin this cat. Supply and demand isn't the only reason prices go up. When a company has a monopoly, they raise their prices as much as they can get away with. Even with our lackluster antitrust enforcement, we've seen evidence of it. The former president of Bumblebee Foods was even sentenced last year to prison for conspiring to fix canned tuna prices. Pilgrim, Pilgrim's Pride, a chicken processing giant, paid a $110.5 million fine for price fixing last year. And then there's JBS, the meat packer that recently caused food prices to spike by getting hacked. If you're a food processor and you get hacked, and food prices across the country go up as a result, you might be a monopoly. In December, they settled a price-fixing suit for $24.5 million. Now imagine if the government were really trying. Even a DOJ antitrust team led by Cantor can't bring a suit in every sector where concentration is driving up prices because it's happening just about everywhere and there are only so many hours in a day. That means they can only go after the worst offenders, which is strong motivation for companies not to go crazy with price hikes with the DOJ sniffing around for good antitrust suits. 
They'd much rather the DOJ find some other sector to bother than their own. It reminds me of the joke where two people are out camping and they see a bear approaching. One guy quickly laces up his sneakers while the other asks, what, you think you can outrun a bear? No, the guy tells his soon-to-be former friend, I only have to outrun you. So, Emily, there's another element of this, uh, of this Jonathan Cantor, Jonathan Sallet controversy that I think is being brought to the fore by this, this Facebook complaint getting, getting tossed out. And that's the fact that Jonathan Sallet, after he left the Obama administration, became a partner at Steptoe and Johnson. Mm -hmm. Ste Steptoe and Johnson, of course, has as a major client Facebook. I've asked Sallet and I've asked the White House if he did any work for Facebook during that time. They, they have not answered that, that question. So it, to me, it, it, it appears that he probably did not do the type of work that requires immediate disclosure, but he did do some work for Facebook that might require recus recusal. Right. So at the very, at the very time, that you would need an, uh, a, a chief of your antitrust division to be making sure that you're really nailing these cases. You might have to have a guy who's recusing himself or who has some type of conflict because he was a partner at Steptoe. And we put, put up this, uh, this Steptoe and Johnson tear sheet. The, the, and this is a remarkable Washington moment. So this is from Steptoe's own website. And this is the, the company bragging about the fact <laughs> that they, they, they helped Mark Zuckerberg testify, and they, they, they quote an article and post it on their site where they, say, where they, they brag this, quote, $200,000 of the 11.5 million that Facebook spent on lobbying last year went to Barnett's law firm, Steptoe & Johnson, bragging that partner Jim Barnett uh, was seated behind Zuckerberg and photographed at the, at the hearing. And so now the, for the Obama administration to follow getting this case kicked out of court, uh, by then uh, nominating a step-toe partner uh, seems problematic, no? Well, yeah, and the reason they put out a just absolutely gross press release like that, which, by the way, in and of itself is an incredible commentary because it's so shameless. It's an incredible commentary on what the currency in Washington really is, what the real currency in Washington really is. And that gets to why the Biden administration might be fingering him for this position. It's that you know, they're going to make the argument that they're letting a fox into the hen house, but that's obviously not what's happening. They're just letting the fox regulate the foxes. That's right. exactly <laughs> how this continues to happen. Um, and, you know, there's, a, there's an interesting point in the reason that the, the judge gave for tossing the suit. As you, as you mentioned, um, it's got, they have 30 days to make their case better. I think it is very true that uh, sort of the, it, Facebook is such an obvious monopoly and so many of these, con these companies mm -hmm. are such obvious monopolies. I literally almost just called them countries instead of companies. Right. That's how big of monopolies yeah. they are. Uh, but they're, they're so obvious that I think we lack the language and we haven't totally refined the language to describe how these very new technologies um, qualify under our very old antitrust laws because it's it's a some of this is just like totally new concepts um, right. of what looks like a monopoly and what acts like a monopoly in the internet. It's it's right. just very different than everything else. It's different than railroads. It's different than you know communications um, in, in the older form. And so I do think that we people need to be better at refining the way they describe. Facebook as a monopoly, and I think I mean that legally. Um, and I think there there's something to that when the judge the judge said you need to sharpen up your language right. here. Yeah, and, and it's and and the judge said uh, you know that Facebook is free for users, so this is a new kind of thing right. uh, for us to try to figure out. Meanwhile, Mike Lee is saying no serious person can deny it's a monopoly. At the same time, the judge is saying it, it doesn't seem like a monopoly to me. But the question for the judge, and well, maybe maybe you're misunderstanding who the users are. Mm. Are 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 the are the people who are uploading uh, pictures of their of their kids the users, or the advertisers the users? Right. Because that's it's not free for advertisers. Right. Advertisers are paying tens of billions of dollars to to reach this audience, and Facebook has a monopoly on the ability of these advertisers to target these people. So maybe the judge would understand that a little bit better, because now now money is changing hands rather than uh, data and and user generated content. Well, why don't they just advertise on MySpace? <laughs> That's a good point. They could. They could they just could do that. Do it. And tr Facebook also, uh, because of this ruling, jumped like 11 percent in the market yesterday and climbed over a trillion dollars in market <laughs> share. It's like it's a bunch of it's a bunch of URLs. If it wasn't a monopoly, what on earth 
is worth a trillion dollars. Oh, absolutely. A couple hundred employees. Well, and, and your point is also super crucial that these companies, again, are really big. So there are certain sectors of the companies that might not actually be monopolies, but they do so many different things. And that's the one of the things that came into, I think, clear focus for everybody over the course of the last year is that you can talk about Amazon in a million different ways. But when you're talking about something like Amazon Web Services, it's a great example of um, how some of these companies function in a way that is total market dominance. They have so much control over the the way that we communicate and the way that we perform commerce. Um, it's, it's incredible. And let's not forget, as their stock is rising off of this nonsense, they're also profiting off the addiction that they are right. generating um, and, and creating in generations, not just young people, because they don't use Facebook. Um, they use Instagram, though. Um, and it's, it's intentional. You have engineers in Silicon Valley sitting around figuring out how to make us addicted um, to the dopamine hits that their uh, their companies induce on a literally on a second by second basis, um, and that's how they're getting rich. And even on the the Facebook case, there's an inflation case to be made because you have all of these small businesses and all of these medium and and large businesses across the country uh, paying these obscene amounts to to reach their own audiences that have liked their page. Yes. Uh, and and paying and paying to advertise on Facebook that though that those are costs that are higher than they ought to be if there was a competitive uh, in environment. The services are probably worse than they would be if there was a competitive environment. And those costs are then passed on to consumers in the form of higher prices. So right. uh, when when Larry Summers wants to come down on the child tax credit as, as a, a cause of higher prices, you know, it, it would be good for Democrats to be able to say, no, actually, here it is. And it'd be good to have somebody who understands what's going on in, in, a, in a canter. Because, uh, you know, Cantor spent his his whole career going after these these companies and he has he left a firm recently to set up uh, an independent firm that just targets basically big big tech mon monopolies whereas uh, Salat has done a lot of legal work across the board he he was a lead attorney in this Colorado antitrust case so you know he he does understand kind of the broad outlines of of this fight but people had have to really explain a lot of you know how facebook's business model works to him although maybe he knows it really well after having worked at a firm right. that worked for facebook or, but, but my guess is that he probably on a couple conference calls and he's the guy that hey he was at the you know he was at the obama administration doing antitrust and here's this guy and this is why these these fees that we're charging you are are realistic right no absolutely i mean again you do need somebody that really understands these companies and all of their nuances because they do so many different things and they do them in such complicated ways that and also by the way Facebook's business model essentially depends on them having a monopoly and you can do the same thing down the board with various different co uh, companies whether it's you know social media in and of itself the business model is essentially like we need to monopolize the space so that everybody's in the same place um, and, and talking in the same space so these things are extremely complicated you have to really know the ins and outs of the company um, and I think clearly there's a better candidate it in this situation. Yeah, and come on, it's almost July. Make a pick already. Gosh, yeah. Come on, bye. Jesus. <laughs> Team Rising is next.